Get your King James Bible and turn to chapter number 34. This is a continuation of the Jeremiah commentary. I don't know how much commentary there's going to be on this chapter, but this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah 34 34 and verse 1. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army, and all the kingdoms of the earth of his dominion, and all the people fought against Jerusalem and against all the cities thereof, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Go and speak to Zedekiah, king of Judah, and tell him, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. And thou shalt not escape out of his hand, but thou shalt surely be taken and delivered into his hand, and thine eyes shall behold the eyes of the king of Babylon." And he shall speak with thee mouth to mouth, and thou shalt go to Babylon. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O Zedekiah, king of Judah. Thus saith the Lord of thee, Thou shalt not die by the sword, but thou shalt die in peace, and with the burnings of thy fathers, the former kings, which were before thee, so shall they burn odors for thee. Now, odors is, you know, like incense, right? And they will and they will lament thee, saying, Ah Lord, for I have pronounced the word, saith the Lord. Then Jeremiah the prophet spake all these words unto Zedekiah. King of Judah in Jerusalem. Verse 7. When the king of Babylon's army fought against Jerusalem and against all the cities of Judah that were left, against Lachish and against Azekah, for these defensive cities remain of the cities of Judah. Now, during the Assyrian invasion, when they took northern Israel captive, they invaded part of Judah and took part of Judah captive also. But when they tried to take Jerusalem, an angel of the Lord killed 185,000 of their troops. So, but then Babylon comes along after, many years after, I don't know, I don't remember how many years, I think it was like 130 something years. But uh, there were a few cities that uh, the Assyrians had not carried off, of which, obviously, Jerusalem was one of them. So you had uh, at least these two defensive cities that remained of the cities of Judah, verse 8. This is the word that came unto Jeremiah from the Lord. After that, the king Zedekiah had made a covenant with all the people which were at Jerusalem to proclaim liberty unto them. Verse 9. That every man should let his manservant and every man his maidservant being an Hebrew or an Hebrewist, go free, that none should serve himself of them to wit of a Jew his brother. Now, there were a number of reasons why somebody could be a servant, basically kind of a slave. Let's say you borrowed money and then you couldn't pay it back. You know, you bought a piece of land, uh, had some crops, the 
for whatever reason the crops failed, you know, lack of rain or, or animals or an invasion, but you couldn't pay it back. What you could do is offer your services and get money and then pay your debt or in the book of the law, let's say you stole something and you were caught. Do you know that you would have to pay back for, I think it's four times. Well, suppose you didn't have the money to pay back four times. Well, then you were to be sold into slavery. And that money would be used to pay off the person you stole from. And let's say that uh, for whatever reason, you could also sell yourself into uh, servitude. You know, you could be somebody's servant. I mean, let's face it, you know, a butler or a maid or a cook or whatever, you know. But here the king is saying, you know, all you rich people that got these people for uh, servants, let them go. Let them go. Verse 10. Now when all the princes and all the people which had entered, entered into the covenant heard that everyone should let his manservant and everyone his maidservant go free, that none should serve themselves of them any more, then they obeyed and let them go. Verse 11. But afterward, they turned and caused the servants and the handmaids whom they had let go to return and brought them into subject, uh, subjection for servants and for handmaids. Hey, wait a minute. We let these people go. Now I got to do my own dishes. I got to go to the fridge and get my own beer. I got to get up and change the channel on my television. What? No, nah, man, I, I, I'm going to go back and get this servant that I let go. I'm going to go back and get them and tell them, get their butts back here and go to work. You know, so much for, uh, you know, you make a covenant and then you break it. Well, that was Israel's specialty, you know. I mean, God forbid I have to make my own dinner. That's what my maidservant's for, you know. And I don't feel like uh, plowing my own field. That's what I'm going to have my uh, manservant do. So, they let them go. Then they went right out and brought them right back. Verse 12. Therefore, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, I made a covenant with your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondmen, saying, At the end of seven years, let ye go every man his brother and Hebrew, which had been sold unto thee, and when he hath served thee six years, Thou shalt let him go free from thee. But your fathers hearken not unto me, neither incline their ears. You see, on the seventh year, they were to be let free. Verse 15. And ye were now turned and had done right in my sight in proclaiming liberty in proclaiming liberty every man to his neighbor and ye had made a covenant before me in the house which is called by my name but oh boy there's every time there's goats around there's a but but ye turned and polluted my name and caused every man his servant and every man his handmaid whom ye had set at liberty at their pleasure to return and and brought them into subjection to be unto you for servants and for handmaids. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, ye have not hearkened unto me 
in proclaiming liberty, every one to his brother and every man to his neighbor, behold, I proclaim a liberty for you, saith the Lord, to the sword, to the pestilence, and to the famine, and I will make you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And I will give the men that have transgressed my covenant, which have not performed the words of the covenant which they had made before me, when they cut the calf in twain and passed between the parts thereof. So I guess this is a, a sacrifice that they did in the temple. Verse 19. The princes of Judah and the princes of Jerusalem, the eunuchs and the priests and all the people of the land which pass between the parts of the calf, I will even give them into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of them that seek their life and their dead bodies shall be for meat unto the fowls of the heaven and to the beasts of the earth. Oh, yeah. You make a promise to the Lord and then you break it. And guess what? You halfway keep the promise and then you break it. Well, the Lord's got a plan for that. So all those that uh, made them slaves, well, they're going to end up being dead. Verse 21. And Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his princes will I give into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of them that seek their life and into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which are gone up from you. Behold, I will command, saith the Lord, and cause them to return to this city, and they shall fight against it, and take it, and burn it with fire, and I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without an inhabitant. Oh, yeah. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.